Hi everyone, I'm Laura Lawhead and here's Blake Bowserman and today we have a very special treat for y'all. We are here in the studio with filmmakers Ben Foster and Mark Dennis here to talk to us about their new movie, Time Trap. Thank y'all so much for being here. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. Yeah. And thank all your mothers for watching us and making you. <laughs> yes. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. So tell us, as alums of TSGB and UT, what is it like being back in the studio? It's awesome. Um, that's funny. Um, I started on sneak peek. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I started on that's sneak great. peek in like 2004, and I auditioned to be a host, and they didn't have me because they said that they didn't think I was going to be uh, kosher on air, and I think that I am. And then uh, wound up doing a show called That's Awesome, and then right after That's Awesome, I met Ben, and we, uh, we made a short film in this room. Yeah, so I never did. I didn't do TSTV. I was always off doing something. I don't know why. It just wasn't on my radar, and Mark was always doing stuff with, with, with these guys, and you know, he talked our way into doing a short film. We built a whole, like in this studio, we built this huge uh, like aquarium looking thing or terrarium, and then we used visual effects to fill it with water, and we had, it was a, it was a time machine, which is funny because we have a time travel movie uh, called Time Trap that's playing tomorrow at the Draft House Mueller, uh, Saturday at Mueller, and it comes out next week on iTunes, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So, the short film that you made here, how did you <laughs> apply what you learned there to making time travel? Did anything you learned there come in handy? I think we learned to spend sure, more time yeah. writing it, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. because we always wind up writing something and then all of a sudden we're making it and then we're having to spend so long remaking it to make sure that it works because we're so excited about filming. We just want to be on set and yeah. that's not really the way to do it. Well, you one know? of the hardest things with anything creative is to start and we're definitely good at starting, but uh, there's not like a third person to be like, what if we waited a minute and we figured out the script a little more? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some people never start and we're lucky that we didn't. And we have, and we usually finish, we land on our feet. Um, we're very lucky. And and I, I'm proud of the movie. And, you know, there's a lot of days where I feel like when we were making it that we were like, this isn't going to work. But it did. Come on, boss. excited to see it. I've already seen it. It's amazing. Everyone should go see it. And I know everyone here is super pumped about its mm -hmm. premiere tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But so the concept itself, we talked about this earlier today, it's it's very high concept. And the, the focus on a group of kids, well, young people undergoing this journey as they travel through time, through space, and it's very scientific. That's a very common genre right now. It's kind of experiencing a rebirth as seen in like It and Stranger Things. Why do you think people like that so much? I think it's because um, a lot of the adults of today, they grew up as children in the 80s and those mm -hmm. are the movies that they watched and you can watch those movies and you can relate to these stories about having some kind of adventure because in the 80s, there was nothing to do except watch television. <laughs> so like we would, we would come home from school and we would go play in the woods and get into trouble. Now it's like kids have their phone and they're on their phone 24 seven and I think that parents today can take their kids to those movies and they can both enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Well that's the great thing about this movie too, these kids end up in a cave so there's no, uh, there's no cell signal for them to be distracted by, like they have to work together and, uh, and figure things out and funnily enough I guess the, the phones and some of the technology they bring in are how they solve some of these pieces but mm. uh, they're not connected to the outside world, there's nobody uh, that you can call and be like, hey, because every every movie uh, that took place in like before 1990, if they just had a phone, it was like there's no movie, it's mm -hmm. over. Like they just call the, they just call the guy. Yeah, um, the movie's really short. Something happens, they call someone, done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our movie, they they're, they're cut off. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're inside a cave, and they've got to figure it out the old-fashioned way. Now, where you mentioned the cave, I actually wanted to ask, how was the experience of filming in a cave for that long? It's Not the best. All right. Yeah, uh, it's tough. You you go underground. You're sometimes you have to walk 15 or 20 minutes to, uh, mm. underground and you have to go back anytime you have to use restroom. So if an actor needs to you know, take a break for a minute, it's like you lose quite a bit of time. Whereas normally on set, you can just you know, run over to a, a, what's it called, honey wagon? Yeah. Yeah, you just run over for a couple of minutes. So it can really delay things. Our batteries were always breaking because of the moisture in there. Um, people are hitting their heads a lot. Mm. It's, I mean, it's, it was fun, but also at the same time, it was hectic. It mm -hmm. was really hectic. Yeah, and if you're an RTF student, you, the, you hear the thing about shoot your movie in one location, and when they tell you that, they do not mean a cave. <laughs> <laughs> so. They mean a studio, they mean an apartment, they yeah. mean s uh, some woods, but they don't mean uh, underground. It's yeah. not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. We made the only one. Now, speaking <laughs> of locations, y'all shot in the Austin area. Yeah, so we had a cave, a cave in North Austin uh, that we shot in, uh, and a cave in West Texas at Caverns of Sonora, which is... 
uh, this incredible show cave. If you ever drive out to El Paso or Marfa, uh, stop in Sonora and check that out. And then we also, we shot some of the film in Los Angeles and we shot at Bronson Canyon at the, in the, the mm -hmm. Bronson Caves. And that's where they shot all the old Batman uh, TV shows, the Adam West mm -hmm. uh, thing. So if you see the Batmobile come fly out of the cave, that's that's. We okay. were doing a podcast earlier, yeah. and the guy that was doing the podcast was showing us this. Uh, he's like, I want to show you guys this black exploitation movie that's my favorite movie, and it's called The Human Tornado. And we start watching this thing on his monitor, and all of a sudden we see the cave that we shot in in his movie <laughs> that he liked. And it was like, he didn't even know that it, where it was, and it turns out that his movie is connected to our movie. Yeah, we were like, that's our cave. I don't know what his point was at the end of all that, but it was a we perfect were, it was we a perfect were so excited, yeah. yeah. No, it ended the, it he was like, well, I'm going to have you guys watch this movie sometime because it's my favorite movie. Yeah, we went up to him because we... <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, we've been in that cave. That's cool. Yeah. So what are y'all's favorite movies? Terminator 2. Uh, probably Back to the Future. Okay. What, what are yours? Oh, we I talked about this, didn't yes. we? You, you asked me, but you never asked Blake. Oh, I, yeah, no, I no. said Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And you, hold on, yours Which is, is Casablanca we're playing and Gone with the Wind that I have not seen. Yes. You should go see them. They're great. Go see, go see them? Yeah, yeah. Go see what? Go, okay. You can't go see them. <laughs> oh, I mean like on, you know, your computer screen. Sure. Or your TV. Go, go away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now, okay. go watch them. I'll probably wait until they play them at like the Paramount or something because mm -hmm. they're always doing, you know, fun events for these old movies and maybe one day. It's tricky yeah. though because I saw Back to the Future at the Paramount uh, this summer on my birthday. And uh, it was an old print from like 1984, whenever when, or 85 when it came out, and it looks terrible. <laughs> like it's just an old shitty print, which is mm. I guess that's technically cool. What Are we, is this bad? We can't say the. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, it's oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, no no one cable. noticed. It's cable, oh, yeah. right? We'll, 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 it's all we'll, good. We'll um, fix it yeah. in post. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. But but we're we're spoiled now by having like these 4K masters with uh, with beautiful like the way honestly the filmmaker wanted us to see it anyway. Um, and I was disappointed. So you should still watch it at home. <laughs> well, we saw my, we saw Terminator 2 together in LA. We saw they did like a, a 3D re-release, and like Ooh. it was it was amazing. It, it looked like it was shot last year. You and we tell hate the 3D movies, but to see that in a restored state was was really cool. I mean, that looks like it was made this year. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Well, then I think the interesting note about that is that both of these movies, of course, feature time travel. And I was curious. There's a lot of different ways to show time travel in film. You have ones like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and then you have things like Primer. That'd be exact opposite way of doing. It. So how? What was your approach to showing time travel? Or like at least like the distortion of time? I think it's the sun. I think it's days and nights. Um, I don't think we thought too much about it. We just thought, okay, they're gonna go into the cave and then you have the idea that once they're in the cave, they're kind of paused and then on the surface, everything is moving really fast. Mm -hmm. um, ben came up with some really cool visual effects. What did you do with Google Earth? You made some kind of uh, light thing to yeah, well, it was to convince you that it wasn't whatever you said it was going to oh. look like. <laughs> Most of our relationship is me coming up with really weird ideas and then Ben going, that doesn't make sense, or that does make sense, and this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, Mark was like, it would look like a big fan going by. And I was like, no, it wouldn't, because the sun would start to do this. And then I was like, just, I'm not, I don't want to talk about this Just anymore. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get on Google Earth, and I'm going to speed it all up, and I'm going to show you. And that's what's in the movie. Yeah. Mm. And you were watching uh, the time time. Time Machine, the new one, uh, recently, and it has the almost the, exact, the exact same, same effect. Yeah. And we're like, oh, we got it right because they, they have money and they have people thinking uh, more. Mm. I wasn't thinking. That's what he's getting at, really. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, on the note of time travel, that in a way helped spark your own friendship. So tell all of our viewers how you guys met here at UT. <laughs> on the first day of class, we had a, a teacher named Charles Ramirez Berg, and he was doing some kind of film criticism class, and. We both walked out of class and we were wearing the same Back to the Future shirt and we were like, hey, cool shirt, and we didn't mean it. We were just like, why is that guy wearing this shirt? I wanted to wear this shirt today. Yeah. But we didn't know that, I didn't know that was him. He didn't know it was me until years later we were making a short film and we were talking, he wore that same shirt to, to set. I think it was here. Yeah, it was in this room. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. It was in this room and we, um, I was like, oh, I have that shirt. I wore it on the first day of school. He's like, so did I. I do remember that conversation. Oh, it was right that, there. You're that guy. Yeah. Everything, um, everything wow. started here. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's so what cool. starts here changes the world. So hey, there you go. That's, that's, your that's, that's what we're, that's what we're, doing. we're trying to change. Yes, he's world. wearing his burnt orange jacket just for this. So. I just want Matthew McConaughey to notice me so I can go to a football <laughs> game with him. Yeah. So. You guys should teach a class here. Honestly, we'd love to. apply to be professors. Mm. We would take it. Yeah, yes, I would. It would be the most fun class you ever take. Oh, actually, I don't know what uh, Scott Rice and Matthew McConaughey are doing, but I think we could 
give them a run for their money. That sounds pretty fun. That's so cheap. Yeah, okay. actually. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, speaking of teaching and like passing things on, so like for all the people that are in TSTB right now, or just all the RTF majors, like do you have any words of encouragement for them other than don't film in a cave? <laughs> uh, the thing that I always tell people is to make sure that you're paying a lot of attention to your concept and, and not just the, um, not just what, what you're working on as far as uh, you know, the set and the, your friends that are getting involved, but make sure that your idea is really solid because you can spend a lot of time on a really bad idea and not realize it until it's too late and you want to make sure that your, your idea is just pristine. You want to be able to be in an elevator with somebody, pitch it in a couple seconds, and then when you get out of it, them go, what was your name again? And you know, they want to talk to you, they want to know more about it. You want to be at a party and when people are like, oh, what year are you? What's your major? All those questions. Do you guys still go to parties? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so when you go to a party and everybody's asking <laughs> the three questions that you're always answering. What are the three questions? They, what's they your, what's your major? What's your major? Yeah. Um, what year are you? I don't know what it is now, but back then it was what's like, are you on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. That one. Or where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? Oh, is, oh yeah, is that's probably one. the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but whenever you're having that conversation and you're bored with that person, be like, hey, did you see that movie? It's about, well, and to pitch them your movie, and they're not going to know it's your movie, and they're just going to be like, no, that sounds really cool or that sounds boring. They'll give you an honest opinion on it, and it's not going to be your mother who's going to tell you it's great. What's an idea you never want to hear again? Like a hackneyed concept that you're just like, oh God, not another film like this. An idea that I never want to hear again. What I don't, I, I don't, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but what I, do, what I don't want to hear, and I hear it all the time, people are like, hey, let me tell you about my idea. And I always stop people right there and I say, tell it to me very quickly. Tell it to me as though you don't have much time because you need to get my attention really fast, like really, really fast. And if you can't do that, your idea is not very good. Well, a lot of times they're not telling you an idea. They're telling you they're about telling some guy. Well, it's this guy and he goes to this place and he meets these people. But by the time they finish that sentence, I don't care about what the next one is, even if it's great. Hmm. Because I'm done. Yeah. I don't know. We, we like high concept stuff. We're not into like, oh, it's about this guy and he met this girl. If you have a guy and met a girl and there's not like a monster or something really cool happening. But the, but the guy meeting a girl isn't, it's the, that's what happens in the plot. That's like we've got a guy that meets a girl. But that's, that's not fine. what you talk about. Yeah, that's you want to talk about, about the cool stuff that happens to the guy and the girl. You don't want to just yeah. say like, oh, what do they get yeah, into? Boy skip, meets girl. The, skip that part. Like mm -hmm. we can assume that somebody meets somebody. Um, get to what makes it something totally different. Do you have an idea that you want to pitch and you're afraid that it's going to sound stupid when you're at one of those parties? Because tell us now, we'll tell you, we'll workshop it right Let's here. Let's do it on the air. Yeah. I'll have to get my journal out. Oh, well, it's <laughs> just in time for our commercial break. Uh, <laughs> oh, it? oh, rats. Well, thank you all so much for talking to us. We can actually continue this conversation after the yeah. break and I'll have to freshen up my idea and my pitches. Go find your journal. One and you can sound like you have one. And you <laughs> Amazing, yeah, even better. Yeah. All righty, well, we have Ben Foster and Mark Dennis with us in the studio. Stay tuned, we'll be back for even more great content. Maybe some clips from their movie, maybe some more AFF content. I don't know, you'll have to stay tuned. Thanks so much, we'll be right back. Thank y'all. Thanks for those dirty words, Ben. Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing our conversation here with Mark Dennis and Ben Foster. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. So much fun. All right, so I know, Laura, are you going to pitch something in a minute? We can give you some time to think if you need. I mean, I, I can pitch this idea that I pitched my freshman year to TSTV, but they, they liked it enough to make it a TV show, so if it sucks, then yikes. <laughs> what is it? Let's okay. hear it. Celebrities in college. Uh, a huge scandal rocks the entertainment industry, sending all of your favorite celebrities without college degrees back to college where they encounter normal students and hijinks ensue. That's actually great. That's, that is great. That, that's really good. And the celebrities play themselves, right? Yes. Uh, each character is kind of like a compilation of celebrity characteristics. You should consider not talking about that. Yeah. Because anytime, an, no, no, anytime, an, idea, anytime <laughs> an idea is actually good, because we always hear really bad ideas, and we, if it sucked, we would tell you it sucked. We would actually be a little bit softer, but um, <laughs> um. don't. If you have a really great idea, don't tell people about it because you can take it out there and you can sell it. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll see. We're, we actually tried to secure a patent for it. We got in a sort of war freshman year because our title is owned by a video game, but then that kind of dissipated. So it's called Hollywood U, like Hollywood University. Hollywood U. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. We yeah. have a theme song, but it's terrible. Did you write it? No, one of our former producers wrote it. And uh, it's, it's a rap, actually. <laughs> and it's Are you going to do it? Oh, no, I can't rap. I wouldn't subject <laughs> you all to that after the show. My mom is watching, so... <laughs> And I, I can't subject her to that. She raised me. Your mom doesn't like rap? No. What's your mom's name? Christy. <laughs> Christy, I want you to go to YouTube right now and type in bad and bougie. And by the time, what was your name again? Laura? Laura. Laura, by the time Laura gets home, you should know how to sing or rap that entire song. 
It's a quality song. I agree. It's a great song. She's going to call me in like yeah. 30 milliseconds. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> now, going with, there actually is one question I do want to ask about that. So, like we were talking about the different ideas for shows, like how was, how was the pitching process here when you guys, when you were at TSTV? I with really don't, I don't remember. I remember that um, if you could, if you could fill up five or six episodes per semester, you could have a show. I think that you did have to actually talk about it and explain it, and we just pitched uh, That's Awesome as a sketch comedy show. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know what we were doing. Like, if you watch the first like three or four episodes of That's Awesome, they're not good. I mean, they're just not. The only thing that's good on him is Zach. Zach Ganner, he's he's hilarious. He was really good on camera. He didn't know what he was doing either. He just came in and he was just funny everything that he said, and they let us stay on. And we were we were pretty popular for a while. We got in some trouble too, but um, eventually <laughs> eventually I left, and that's when yeah, that's when Ben and I Ben and I met. But it wasn't. I don't. I think as long as you had an idea and people were actually going to do it, because the hardest thing to do here was get people to work on your show because everybody's doing stuff. I don't know what it's like now, but back then people didn't show up to meetings, they didn't turn their clips in. Like I would be like, all right, I need your segment, and they would tell me the entire semester, what, what? No, I'm just pointing <laughs> at our people. Oh, are, they, are, are you the one that does that? No, no, I'm just, <laughs> uh, these people like are then. the best people. Okay. Honestly, the people that are here right now, the others, well. <laughs> oh dear. They ain't here. They're watching, but oh, no. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, continue, sir. I don't know what I was talking about. I'm sorry, I forgot. Well, but I remember when we first met, you were still doing some of this stuff, mm -hmm. and you were always up editing episodes of of That's Awesome and, oh, and it, putting that together because you were Orange Tree, right? Yeah, and it was it was crazy because it, we were always cutting it so close that what would happen is we would export a tape, and somebody would run the first like ten minutes of the tape over here to put it in while we were still exporting a second tape, and so it would be one tape, and then the next one, instead of having the entire show, like we were always right right at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we screwed up, and we'd have to, um, we'd have to like air an old episode, or like there was one time we had some, some hot girls come in and like answer questions, we did That's Awesome Live, and that was actually more popular than the real show, and then we were like, no, that doesn't work, we can't just have people only watching because girls are on, so we went back to the regular sketch comedy. And what were you using to edit at that time? What software was that? Back then, I think I was probably using, I was using probably Premiere. You were in Premiere because, uh, I didn't know anybody that used Premiere because everybody was using Final Cut. Right. And I was like, this guy's using Premiere. That's but I weird. got it for free. And now we're all back into in Premiere. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did. And now uh, we all pay to use Premiere. Premiere in college, <laughs> and then we did a Final Cut for our first movie, and then they changed something, so we went back to Premiere, and Premiere's great, and that's what we use now. And that's what you should use. Yeah. Uh, and that was actually a follow-up question. We might not I use that anymore. Yeah. In terms of like, the technology <laughs> available, like how we have like really good cameras in our pocket, and that we have great editing software, do you think it's becoming easier to make films or do you think the same challenges are still there? We were just talking about that. It's it's less of a, like when we were in college, we were the guys that like knew how to use the thing. Like not everybody could could tell a story with pictures, but now like everybody's got an Instagram story and they, they understand editing and framing and, and all that. It's a language that, that everybody speaks and it's not unique uh, to filmmakers anymore. So as a filmmaker, you have to do something uh, with concept and story uh, or style and, and that's, <laughs> the only legs up you really have on anybody else with a, with an iPhone. I mean, they, I saw a movie at Sundance that uh, was done on an iPhone. The, uh, uh, unseen? One about the, the no, uh, the one about the, the girl in L.A. though. Like oh, uh, tangerine. Tangerine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And they had lenses that they, they, had, they modified their iPhone, but it's just anybody can go to it. Ben made the first uh, music video that was ever shot on an iPhone. Really? Yeah, Seriously? I made a Bob Schneider video. Where he like That's he awesome. loses his uh, he loses his iPhone and then he gets passed all around the country Ooh, and wow. it's just all shot on the it was right when the iPhone four came out mm -hmm. somebody probably shot something on an iPhone he told me it was the first iPhone music was video, on YouTube so I and with it. and YouTube was like new mm -hmm. which is crazy I remember the first time someone told me I made a music video for some friends and they were like what are we gonna do with this we're we gonna put it on YouTube and I was like what's that I had no idea what YouTube was. <laughs> Yeah. We, did, we didn't. We didn't even put. We didn't even put our shows on YouTube back then. We had no idea. It was. It all happened around that time. We were on the, the beginning of something new. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so wild because now our primary audience and our viewership is like through YouTube. Like right. after this, like we're gonna get a hundred more views on YouTube than we ever would live. Right. A hundred. You well, should tell those people to share it so that all of their friends see it so they can get 105. <laughs> hey, 105. There we go. A yeah. record for us. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, we 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 actually uh, we got a couple of ones. One of them has five hundred thousand. So we're wow. so that's that's What's our greatest. That? Um, one of our former producers uh, interviewed um, the entire cast of the Gilmore Girls, oh, that's and cool. um, oh, they that's cool. marketed it really well. So maybe this one will be the one that gets six hundred thousand. So Who knows? It's we'll no, have but to but see. but that's the that's kind of the thing that we're up against now. Like there's so much stuff out there, oh, so much noise and other films and just things out there to compete with. So just because we have uh, cool time travel movie doesn't mean we're going to immediately get the attention 
of everybody to look at look at it because there's just so much out there. And that's why it's important for you at home right now to watch the Time Trap trailer. And if you like it, share <laughs> it to your Facebook and your Snapchat and all of that. And if you don't like it, share it anyway and say that you don't like it because all those people who don't like you, they're going to like it. <laughs> Well, we certainly can't wait to see it. And you've given us hope for the future. There is hope yet for aspiring filmmakers. Yep. Alrighty, well, that concludes our show for this evening. Thank you so much to all our viewers. Thank you so much to Mr. Foster and Mr. Dennis for coming. It was an absolute pleasure. It meant the world to us. <laughs> and be sure to follow us at Sneak Peek TV and keep checking our YouTube for this to be uploaded later. Thanks so much. I'm Laura Lawhead. I'm Blake Bosman. And have a great night.